comes to drawing lines and marking lumber, there's no substitute for a well-sharpened carpenter's pencil. Do you ever wonder why they're not round? Round pencils are much easier to sharpen. Even with a broken lead, a few turns of the crank, and they're good as new. The point can be made needle sharp with a few wipes on a piece of sandpaper. So why don't carpenters carry those around in their pouch or behind their ear instead? Well, for me, the answer is simple. Rectangular lead draws better lines on wood. Lead in a round pencil can be thick too, but the point is fragile. It doesn't take much to snap the tip off. The point wears down quickly and makes it tough to draw a long, fine line. A properly sharpened carpenter's pencil is the best of both worlds. A fine tip that is sturdy, so a long, sharp line can be drawn, even on rough lumber or sheet goods. And a sharp line equals accurate cuts. Even though the carpenter pencil lead looks thick and stubby, when it's turned on edge, you can see it's razor sharp. A similar sharpness to this round pencil. But the test is, how long of a thin line can each of these tips draw? The round lead pencil starts out with a nice sharp line but quickly degrades. But the carpenter pencil starts sharp and stays sharp. The proof is in the width of the line at the end of only six feet. The width of the line from the round pencil is nearly twice as thick as the line drawn by the carpenter's pencil. Without resharpening, the carpenter's pencil can draw line after line. Without resharpening, I was able to draw 10 lines with the carpenter's pencil before the line width equaled that of the first line drawn with the round pencil. But a poorly sharpened carpenter's pencil with a nasty point on it that looks like it was chewed sharp by a rabid squirrel won't get the job done either. So here's a quick lesson on how I sharpen them. Sharpening a carpenter's pencil with a classic point is nothing more than whittling with a purpose. Make sure you have a sharp knife and whittle the flat faces first, taking a number of passes to get down to the lead. This is when I shave the lead to make it thinner and sharper at the end. Flip around and do the other side. And finish whittling the sharp edge on the lead. The point can be made very sharp this way because there's still pencil wood on each side of the lead to support the lead while it's being shaved. Next I do the edges. Angling down to the lead. A slight turn at the end. And I like to put one final pass on these sharp corners just to make it pretty. That's about all there is to it. When I have lines to draw on a rough surface like concrete, concrete block, or stucco, I sharpen the pencil in the classic style, but I leave the lead blunt so that it has a chance of drawing a line on the rough surface without crumbling. The process is the same. I leave the lead exposed a little bit shorter and don't whittle it to a sharp point. Same as the classic point, with, but with a blunt tip, so I'm able to draw visible lines on very rough surfaces. The flat faces 
and rectangular lead of a carpenter's pencil make it ideal for scribing boards to uneven surfaces. The tip of the classic point is good for scribes up to about an eighth of an inch. When the amount to be scribed is more than an eighth of an inch, the tip of the classic point isn't enough to reach the scribing amount. That's when I employ the offset tip scribe point. By sharpening the tip off center to the face of the pencil, I can get a scribe distance of three eighths of an inch pretty easily. The method for sharpening the classic point and the offset point are very similar, but I'll go through the steps to show you how I do it. Instead of starting with the faces, I start with the edges. And the goal is to peer down to the far side of the lead. So take some fairly long sweeping cuts to get down there. Because we're exposing the lead, making a real fine point, this can be fragile. And take a couple of tries, but we'll see how we do on our first attempt here. Still got a little bit of lead left there. I'm going to keep peering down until I get to the other edge of the lead. We're just right there. With the one edge pared down, I'll sharpen the other side, which doesn't need to start as far back on the pencil. This time we just kiss the lead and give it a sharp point. You can see how it's razor sharp, but the tip doesn't snap off because of the wood on each side. Now I can carefully clean up the sides to expose the lead for its scribe point. Sneaking up on it there. These extra passes just to kind of clean things up. And that is what I call the offset scribe point. Scribing the point in this way lets me easily get a 3 8 inch offset scribe without using an extra scribe block or anything. Sometimes it's just the ticket. If the pencil's turned the other way, you can see the scribe is less. But still might be useful getting three options for scribing just from a pencil. The classic point being the shortest and the full offset being the greatest. Sometimes I need to do an unusually demanding scribing task. When a classic point makes it difficult to get an accurate scribe to a surface. Because of the offset between the face of the pencil and the center of the lead, it's difficult to get an accurate scribe in an unusual situation. When regular pencils and scribing methods don't work, I reach for the most unusually sharpened pencil in my arsenal. By planing down the face of the pencil and then using a sanding block, the face of the pencil lead and the point of the pencil are all in a single plane so that I can easily project a line to be scribed off of a flat surface. As you can tell, I contrived this scenario to show how a pencil sharpened with a projected point can scribe some pretty unusual things with little effort, quite accurately. Don't ask me why I'd ever need to scribe a piece of 2 by 3 vertical grain Douglas fir through a piece of 6 inch crown molding, but if I had to, this is how I'd do it. Hopefully I've shown that a pencil sharpened in this unusual manner can be quite helpful in a sticky situation. And this is how I go about sharpening a projected point on a carpenter's pencil. Starting with a square end on a pencil, I simply use a block plane to shave a very shallow angle on one face of the pencil. Once the face is shaved sufficiently, the next step is to smooth it up and true it up on a piece of sandpaper supported by something flat and solid. That kind of makes a mess.
but it gets the job done. Once that's taken care of, the other steps are pretty simple and it's really essential for this lead to have a sharp knife, otherwise that fragile tip of that lead will just snap off. Same method as the classic tip. I leave wood supporting on the sides as I shave the lead down. I'm going to take care of a couple sides. And the exposed graphite is pretty fragile. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get this pencil sharpened nicely. Once the pencil is sharpened you can make very nice accurate scribes in some pretty unique situations. Resharpening the lead then is just a matter of a quick rub on the sandpaper and possibly a little bit of tune-up with a knife. I just keep this pencil in my toolbox to pull it out in a pinch. With a well-sharpened carpenter's pencil and an assortment of others sharpened with task-oriented points, you'll be prepared to tackle carpentry projects with accuracy and confidence.